So, it's been a while, but I'm back, and this is the iPhone 12 mini review. With the movement of time, phones have gotten better and better, but also they've gotten bigger and bigger. Now what this phone does is it takes all the positivity and all the good features of how phones have improved in the past few years, but then puts it back into a smaller form factor that was the norm back in like 2013. That's what this phone does. And a lot of people were a fan of those form factors, of those smaller easier form factors they were nice they were pocketable and it just made phones very phone like as opposed to being a tablet replacement and so everybody who likes that well that's what this phone does it gives them what they want but a 2020 version of it and does it do it well yeah it does now in both my iphone 12 and 12 pro review talking about the design i have said that i really do like this boxy design with the exception of the front because i'm not a fan of the notch I really like the design of these recent iPhones. They feel really nice. Holding it is really, really good. The build quality is way up there. As per usual, Apple manufacturing is on point. And it's a really nice phone just to hold with those flat edges. With the iPhone 12, I felt like it was a little bit less comfortable than a rounded phone. But that was just a nitpick. But there was a reality. It was a little bit less comfortable because this is smaller. Comfort isn't really a setback at all here, but I mean it's barely a setback on a 12 or 12 Pro either, so. But it feels good. It feels like an iPhone though at the end of the day. To conclude how it feels, it's like a light, small slab of metal and glass. Now if you've watched any of Marquez's videos, you can see his hands are like massive against the phone. And he makes the phone usage look so smooth and easy. And when I use the iPhone 12 mini, now that I look back at the shots, that's kind of what it feels like. I feel like a Marquez with my big ass hands. It's really easy to reach to the top, reach to that, reach to this. Very, very easy. And because the screen is taking up that entire front of this phone, you're not losing anything in terms of content. Like, it's absolutely fine. I mean, if you do compare it to an iPhone 12, you will notice that the iPhone 12 is overall nicer for content consumption because it's a bigger screen. But content consumption is absolutely fine on this phone. It's good. And it's very easy just to swipe things away reach down to the notification panel get the control center out do a few extra things it's very very quick and to that it adds like an extra flawless feature of fluidity overall adding a really nice user experience so people who want a phone that works in 2020 it complies with all the 2020 standards like wireless charging water resistance so there aren't setbacks from old phones this has it all but at the end of the day it doesn't try to become your tablet, it remains just being that thing in your pocket that can do stuff when you need it to do stuff. And it's really good at doing that. Now this phone still has lightning, it has dual speakers at the bottom, the speakers are good, but I have my complaints about lightning. But they might be getting rid of it soon, which is why maybe they're not using USB-C, but that's a downside. In my iPhone 12 and 12 Pro review, I was talking a lot about iOS and how fluid it is and how you're generally going to be getting the same iPhone experience even though it's a new iPhone just just look at the differences that come with this phone that I've talked about before and just apply that to your usual iPhone experience and this is what using this phone is going to be like but overall iOS is super fluid animations are on point everything is well thought out and it's the most optimized phone software I've ever used which worked out really really nicely with this small compact phone because you don't feel like anything's been cheap or quickly created it's a very high quality phone that's been thought out super well and manufactured super well and that's that's a benefit of it being apple and generally just follows all of apple's standards magsafe is really cool i really like it for those of you who don't know apple are going to get rid of the charging port by next year or the year after and the problem with wireless charging is that you can't use the phone and charge at the same time but this is what MagSafe is for. MagSafe is kind of getting rid of that problem. And this is this is an example of Apple creating a problem and then selling the solution. They're going to get rid of the charging port and then sell you MagSafe. I mean, it might come in a box. Who knows, to be honest. But this is what Apple are doing. And I think it's kind of cool to see this whole wireless thing. And I think it's interesting because MagSafe does work pretty well. 
Now you also get water resistance, and as I say, it's a 2020 phone, and that's that's the part that's impressive because it's like there's a lot of technology compact into a very very small build, and it's good. But then then the problem there there's one place where I would say they compromised. Other than that, there's no compromises. I mean, this is a smaller iPhone 12 with worse battery life, and that is it. But then that battery life issue is kind of annoying. Now in terms of battery life, it gets around four hours on the daily. This is on a day where I wake up at 7.30, I've started using it at 7.30, and it's dead by usually around 10 p.m. that day, with four hours of screen on time. This isn't the best, but here's, here's how I'm going to put it. I mean, if you need a phone with good battery life, this is not the one for you. The battery life here is really not that great. But considering that this is the iPhone 12 mini, I assume, and, and this is an assumption, it really depends on you, but I assume that people who are buying this phone aren't exactly pro users they're not heavy users either they're the sort of people who just want a phone that complies with the 2020 standards but it's just kind of there when they need it it's not like it's not something that they use a lot it's just something to get the job done and that's about it i don't expect them to be really pushing the battery life but you know you know yourself better than i do so you make that judgment but then as i say other than that there's no compromises look at the cameras you got the same cameras as the iPhone 12 here, which are a nice ass set of cameras. Now you're lacking a telephoto lens, and something about iPhone lenses in general is they're not very big, so you don't get very nice bokeh naturally, which is why portrait's important. Bokeh is like the background blur. But nevertheless, it's a nice camera. Have a look at these. Now what I really like about Apple Photos is that they keep their processing to a minimum. It doesn't result in a photo with over sharpening, an exaggeration of colors, that kind of thing. So it ends up looking very, very professional and subtle, but in a good way. And plus with that, it looks really nice outside with the dynamic range in the clouds, it looks really good. And it's situations like these where the ultra wide looks really nice because you got that really nice lighting and a suitable wide frame. But then this whole thing about processing and sharpening also applies to videos. This is why I love Apple cameras because the videos end up looking really, really nice. My only complaint is I wish it had a larger sensor because then you'd get more of that blurred background, that bokeh. But other than that, it looks really nice, especially in landscapes. The issue with the ultra wide lens though is it's one of those things that the conditions have to be really good for it to look good. If the conditions are bad, then it falls apart really, really quickly, really, really easily. But overall, solid video. You're getting that Dolby Vision, that HDR, and it gives you a lot of versatility when it comes to working with these kinds of videos. Apple even advertised this camera to work in filmmaking, which is interesting. Not sure, but you know, I think it's doable. So yeah, that's the cameras, and basically, that's about it. I've shared my thoughts here about this phone, but as a conclusion, if you're looking for a small phone that works in the 2020 atmosphere because it has all the technology that complies with outside technology, wireless charging, IP68 water and dust resistance, that kind of thing, but also a nice screen, something that really doesn't lack in technology, but at the end of the day, it's just a small thing, it's your phone, you have it when you need it, you're not a power user, it's just there to perform whatever you need it to perform, but in a very flawless, fluid, easy way, then this is the phone for you. If you care more about the customization aspect of it or anything like that, like you're more invested into the way the phone works and looks and all of that, then an Android would be better. But I mean, you can get a lot of things done with an iPhone. In fact, you can get this setup done with an iPhone. Right? Links below for icons and wallpapers and all that. But look, you're an iPhone user, but you want something very small, simple, easy. This is the one. This is the guy. The pricing isn't too bad. I mean, it is on the, you know, it's on the pricey end. It's not a budget phone by any means. It's an iPhone but it's really really good at getting the job done and 100 percent it's the best compact phone of the year that's how i would describe it and that's it i hope you guys enjoyed the video please 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 subscribe if you haven't already i want to get 10k by january also give this video a like and comment because it helps with the algorithm and check out my instagram at the romeo nagar for a behind the scenes perspective and you get to see me work my magic you know kind of cool i hope you guys enjoyed the video I appreciate you watching, and I will see you in the next one. Salam.